and it's a special good morning to you and of course we say happy founders day to everyone every Ghanaian listening and watching as live everywhere you are today we're live on Facebook and also on YouTube happy happy founders day and Ghanaians are today uh, taking a rest from work as they mark Founders Day. And so every Ghanaian, wherever you are, we wish you happy Founders Day. It's a holiday. Well, welcome to the front page. And this is the holiday edition of your morning starter, the front page. My name is Bismarck Brown. It's time to find out what's making headline news this beautiful morning as we celebrate the founders of our nation, Ghana. We'll kick off with the daily graphic of today. Banner headline, President on wheels first locally assembled VW vehicles unveiled automobile ad uh, development center to monitor standards. And the story comes to the photograph of His Excellency the President who is test driving one of the uh, VW vehicles. The government is to establish an automobile industry development support center which will coordinate the technical processes for licensing domestic vehicle assembling and manufacturing. The center will also monitor the compliance with industry regulations and standards. And that's on the front page here of Daily Graphic. Also on the front page of the Daily Graphic today, Nation pays tribute to founders today. And Ghanaians are today, August 4, 2020, taking a rest from work as they mark Founders Day. The statutory holiday is observed in honor of the pivotal role played by great Ghanaians who laid down their lives in the independence struggle. As part of events to commemorate the day, a public lecture dubbed Founders Day Public Lecture will be organized under the auspices of the Ministry of Information at 4 p.m. in Accra. The Speaker of Parliament, Professor Ero Michael Kwe, will be taking Ghanaians down memory lane as he delivers the lecture at the event. That's on the front page here of Daily Graphic. Also, uh, at page 13 of the Daily Graphic today, Parliament approves AF, uh, CFTA Secretariat Agreement and Parliament has approved the agreement between the government and the African Union for the establishment of the African Continental Free Trade Area Secretariat in Accra. Key provisions of the agreement require that Ghana, as the host country, shall provide at its own expense a secure, equipped and furnished permanent premises for the Secretariat. It said the Secretariat shall have a legal personality with the capacity to enter into a contract and acquire and dispose of movable and immovable property needed for its operations in accordance with the laws of Ghana. The agreement also said the government shall provide a secure, equipped and furnished official residence for the head of the Secretariat and shall guarantee the uh, in and also shall guarantee uh, that the premises of the Secretariat uh, is safe. We shall also be accorded diplomatic status. And that's here at page 13 of Daily Graphic. Also on the front page of Daily Graphic, Defense Minister NDC trade accusations over voters register. Let's move on uh, to the Ghanaian Times this morning. The Ghanaian Times comes with a photograph of the EC chairperson, Mrs. Jean Mensah. Ongoing voter registration exercise, EC exceeds targets, registers over 15 million voters so far. And that's on the front page here of the Ghanaian Times. And the story says the Electoral Commission said yesterday it has exceeded its registration target of 15 million Ghanaians onto the new voters register for the 2020 general election and a deputy chairperson uh, at the commission in charge of corporate affairs dr bosman eric asari stated that as of july 30 a total of 15 million 117 thousand 436 applicants had been registered let me uh, probably summarize uh, a breakdown of the uh, registration figures for you, uh, picking on uh, on major and leading uh, regions. The Greater Accra, Ashanti, Eastern and Central have accounted for more than 50% of the total uh, registered applicants as of July 30. And according to Dr. Bosman Asari, the current provisional figures indicated that out of the 15 million 
117,436 registered applicants in the 16 regions. The Greater Accra region has registered 3,225,508. With Ashanti region having registered 2,700,805, uh, the Eastern region has also recorded uh, 1,444,274 of the total registered voters, while Central region has registered 1,404,018 people. While in the Western, Northern, and Voter regions, uh, we've had a total of 974,293 for the Western region, 922,395 uh, for the Northern region, and also uh, the voter region recording 852,277. And the EC goes on to give uh, the other st statistics for the other regions uh, at page 12 of the paper. And that's on the front page here of the Ghanaian Times. Also on the front page of the Ghanaian Times, I am sure of victory in the Zema polls. That's attributed to His Excellency President Nana Adodankwa Kufuado, who is confident that his performance over the past three and a half years in government will secure him a second term victory in the upcoming December presidential elections. Quote, in 2016, I asked the people of Ghana to give me a chance and see my handiwork. They gave me the chance, so it is now for them to decide. Ghanaians are the best judge of my performance. I have done my part and I know they appreciate it. I am only waiting upon the Lord for December 7, unquote. And uh, that's from His Excellency, the President of the Republic. The Ghanaian Times also says, woman who allegedly murdered two children uh, to undergo psychiatric tests and a te uh, magistrate court on Monday ordered the 28-year-old mother who allegedly murdered her two children in Tema uh, to undergo a psychiatric examination to ascertain her mental stability. And according to the police, on July 30, 2020, at about 17.30 uh, p.m., the Tema regional CID had information that the two children were found dead at Manhien in Tema. He said police visited the scene and found the bodies of a boy and a girl aged two years and eight months respectively in a wooden structure. Inspector Mensa said the bodies were subsequently taken to the police hospital morgue for preservation and autopsy. The court presided over by Mrs. Akosia Anochiwa a Japan granted the order when prosecution made an application to the effect when the accused Abigail Abugia ap appeared before it. Abugia, uh, whose plea was not taken, was also remanded into police custody uh, after a provisional charge of murder was read and explained to her in the Chi language. Well, it's on the front page here of the Ghanaian Times of Tuesday. And uh, still uh, going on with other papers. Well, the Daily Guide, our next paper, uh, reports today fire in NDC over Ahoy attacks on Rawlings. And uh, Professor Ahoy's book uh, titled Working with Rawlings has stirred some controversy within the National Democratic Congress. And uh, you've, we've seen and heard uh, senior members of the NDC like uh, Mr. Dan Abodaki, a former Minister of Trade and Industry, being the first to publicly return fire, as it were. And it goes on and on and on to talk about the reactions that this book is caught in within the NDC. Also on the front page of Daily Guide today, Defence Minister challenges Mahama on voter suppression claims. And the Minister of Defence, Dominic Nitiwu, has vehemently denied an allegation by ex-president John Mahama and his NDC elements that government is using the military to suppress voters ahead of the December general election. He said... Uh, uh, he has consequently urged the ex-president, who is also the flag bearer of the NDC, to provide evidence uh, for his allegation of voter suppression involving the military, and he would act. The Daily Guide reports today, EC exceeds targets, and you find that on its front page. Kafaba, which killer in court, is also a story on the front page of Daily Guide. President unveils 
VW cars is also uh, a very positive story on the front page here of Daily Guide. Now let's turn our attention to some stories um, making headlines on the continent of Africa. And this morning we're told uh, inside Africa, Tanzania bans Kenya Airways from flying into country. And Tanzania has banned Kenya's national carrier from flying into country. The latest move in a deepening row between the two neighboring countries. The Tanzanian Civil Aviation Authority said Kenya Airways flights were being banned on a reciprocal basis after the Kenyan government decided against including Tanzania in a list of countries whose passengers would be allowed to enter Kenya while, well, beg your pardon, when commercial flights resumed on Saturday following the lifting of coronavirus restrictions. Quote, Tanzania has noted its exclusion in the list of countries whose people will be allowed to travel into Kenya. Uh, the Tanzanian government has decided to nullify its approval for Kenya Airways uh, flights between Nairobi and um, uh, Dar Kilimanjaro, Zanzibar, effective August 1, 2020, until further notice. This letter also rescinds all previous arrangements that permit uh, Kenyan Airways flights into the United Republic of Tanzania. So it's more like if you want to allow our people into your country, your flights can also not land in our country. And that's also happening on the continent of Africa. Well, moving on to some other stories happening in Africa, ShopRite considers pulling out of Nigeria. Africa's biggest supermarket chain, ShopRite, South African-owned, says it is con considering pulling out of Nigeria. It said it was looking at selling all or a majority stake of its operations in Africa's most populous country. ShopRite is the latest South African retailer to look at uh, leaving Nigeria. Clothing uh, firm Mr. Price announced its exit in June and Woolworths also in 2014. ShopRite's decision comes at a time when Nigeria's economy is struggling amid the COVID-19 pandemic. Economists from the World Bank have warned that the oil-rich country could be on the brink of its worst recession since the 1980s because of the collapse in oil prices coupled with the COVID-19 pandemic. Not too good a story for Africa's economy. Also happening in Africa, Togo Bishop targeted in WhatsApp spying. Guess what? A prominent Catholic bishop and a priest in Togo are reported to have been targeted by spyware on their mobile phones, the first known cases that involve members of the clergy. Last year, the messaging service WhatsApp said 1,400 people around the world, including human rights activists, were being listened to using a spyware made in Israel. An investigation by the French newspaper Le Monde uh, and the British Guardian revealed that Bishop Benoit Olowunu and five other critics of the Togolese government had been spied on via their mobile phones. It is not known who carried out the cyber attack, but not surprisingly, some of the victims are pointing straight at their own government, and that's also happening in Africa. Well, there's a very sad story. Grenade attack on Cameroon camp for displaced people kills 16, and fighters from the Boko Haram armed group have killed at least 16 people in an attack on a camp for displaced people in northern Cameroon, an official has said, quote, the toll is currently 16 dead. It is clear that it was Boko Haram that was responsible, unquote. And that's also happening in Africa. Well, let's go to uh, Mali, where Mali's opposition uh, renews a uh, call for President Keita to resign, also uh, making headline news uh, on the continent of Africa. We'll leave it here, and thank you very, very much uh, for being part of our holiday edition of The Front Page. You can get your weather updates and also get your coronavirus updates as well right here live on Stream TV. Enjoy your holiday today. Today is Founders Day. Let's celebrate the founders of our nation and take time to take stock 
and also project into the future. Have a super day and keep well. My name is Desmond Brown. This is Stream TV Beyond the Headlines.